them, here we'll be getting a bird's eye view of the finest award-winning FMB, Onimusha. Alex lands herself an interview with Adrian Smith from the Tomb Raider team and finds out what's what with Next Gen. And Emily plays the impressive and soon to be released Project Eden. It's the only life I know. Well, like the song, Games 2 have been celebrating urban street culture since youths and arcades got it together back in the 80s. Jet Set Radio did it for graffiti and rollerblading, Tony Hawks did it for skateboarding, and now Matt Hoffman wants a slice of the action with the very latest bike mode, as he now stars in his own game, Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX. Speaking of old Tony Hawks, Matt Hoffman uses the engine from the original Tony Hawks game. And as you may imagine, the result is pretty much a BMX version of the immensely successful skateboard sim. Fans of Dave Mirror will be pleased to see that this game runs much faster than its rival, but then it is based on Tony Hawks. For this reason, it has exactly the same controls and the same pick up and play feel to it. Question is, what does this game do to make bike simulation any greater than skateboarding? Well, the answer is nothing, really. It definitely does create the feeling you're on a bike, and fans of Tony Hawk's will probably love it, because it looks and feels the same, but with slightly different mechanics and environments. Obviously, with the added element of handlebars, there's definitely some kick-ass tricks to be had. Once you've got enough air behind you, pulling off wicked little showstoppers like the Superman is no hard feat. And a flick of the shoulder buttons will give you a nice little rocket queen or a tall stool or tail whip number. When it comes to toothpick and fakey grind, balance and manoeuvre are all very well handled. While an improvement in the graphics would be nice, there are some cool looking parks to ride around. The only competitive element is when you play two-player, and here an excellent graffiti mode is offered up to all the stoners who've played the game to death and reckon they can out-trick their opponent. Wherever you pull off a trick will be marked your tag colour. If you can do a better stunt in the same place as your opponent, you replace their tag with your own till you paint the whole park your particular shade of ego. Cool. Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX is a sexy little game if you're pissed bored with all the other kids on the block and it's coming out for your Game Boy Colours and Playstations in May but if you really want to bail out in style there's only one way to go If you're hungry for more extreme sport than Matt Hoffman can offer there's hope! Whoa! And you don't need to jump out of an airplane to get it! Here for your couch potato pleasure is our selection of top five big air moments! Tony Hawk, the man, the myth, the dude with the wheels attached to his feet, and the only guy who's ever been able to spin around 900 degrees in the air without landing on his noggin. He takes to the skies most triumphantly in this acclaim-worthy skateboarding sim. Blah ha, little birdie! The trick is to never look down, apparently. You're speeding along at a couple of hundred miles an hour in your futuristic hover vehicle. The last thing you need is a gaping crevice looming up ahead. Oh well, too bad. You're playing Wipeout. What can you expect? Clear it or die. Whoa! If you prefer a little powder to concrete under your nose, then have a gander at the spec. Spectacular SSX on the PlayStation 2. Not only is this the most stylish snowboarding game to date, but you are rewarded for hazardous behavior. Chuck yourself off ice cliffs and ride it, baby. Take your wings out and fly. One side, one. But if all this newfangled color is straining your smarting eyes, take a trip back to the beige bliss of driver. Recreate your favorite Blues Brothers moment and trash the rosas at the same time. Fresh. Most car games just give you the chance to catch the air on some grey track or other. Underrated Chaos Monger Twisted Metal World Tour went 10 steps better by letting you zoom across the rooftops of Paris. And of course, diving head first off the Eiffel Tower. A baguette machine bonanza of big air madness.
Wait, there's one more. How can we not celebrate the big heir of our cheeky little amigo Abe? He's been at the beans again. There's nothing more amusing to these modicons than a little flatulence. Do shut up, Alex. What? Next, Boof and Emily have some pornographic news. If you find the idea of hanging around a bus stop for 10 minutes unbearable in real life, then why would you want to do it in a video game? Well, that's the question millions of Shenmue players pose to Yu Suzuki, creator of the groundbreaking role-playing game on the Dreamcast. But for his next offering, cleverly titled Shenmue 2, you won't have to. Hallelujah! No more hanging around virtual bars wanting a real pint. No more wasting time in video arcade halls. No more being a dodgy lurking bastard in parks. Now you'll have the option to time travel and skip across those more dull moments in game. Which should pack more doing and less boring into the next set of three desks. More on this one as it arises. But now lock up the children and hide the elderly in their cupboards. Because more interactive porn is about to hit our home computing system. Bits. It may have all started out with Sam Fox unveiling herself on the Commodore 64 in strip poker. Things might have got a bit more real time with the PC based adventures of Leisure Suit Larry. And Smut might have gone up a notch when Lula Virtual Babe came onto the shelves in 1998. But now it's time for some new nips. Tip, tip. Tips from the Daily Sport. Proving that they're painfully aware of their target audience, Virgin Interactive along with Shring Entertainment are about to release a football quiz game with a few unhidden extras. Correctly answer the general knowledge questions and one of four bucks and bim bets will get their kits off faster than you can say. Something for the weekend, sir. He shoots. Ooh, he scores. It should be on the top shelves in time for Father's Day, though anyone over the age of 15 can get their hands dirty with this one. So chuck out those sticky panty raider boxes, because there are some new girls in town. And finally, if your idea of entertainment is just as brainless but features animal antics, then get your fingers twitching, because the original David Attenborough song along, Parappa the Rapper 3, is about to hit the PlayStation 2. The little hip-hop badly drawn dog is a big favourite around the bitch camp. He and his little lemmy sis, Angema Lemmy, rapped and guitared their way into our hearts with simplistic gameplay, Simon Says Action, and ridiculous but unforgettable lyrics. We'll be looking forward to this next incarnation of Chop Chop Master Onion with bated breath. Ooh. But how this is going to utilise the super brain power of the next generation it's console the mind. is still in the air. Chop Chop Master, I think you'll find. Here's a gamble on a game that's definitely taking full advantage of the console's ubermelon. This week's FMV is Onimusha from Capcom, creators of pant stains across the nation thanks to their Resident Evil and Dino Crisis series. So what do they have on offer next? In a world of darkness and magic, our hungry warlords battle for the control of feudal Japan. One swordsman stands alone. another cheesy plot then. But this time it's based on fact, with a little magic chucked in. It's Resi meets Shogun Total War. Onimusha Warriors We're is the most expensive game Capcom has ever produced. Princess. For us movie junkies of the early 21st century, we're asking for enhanced cinematics in our games. This baby beat out The Matrix and Perfect Storm in scooping the Skigraphs Award for special effects. They're not kidding around here. The game's look is based on acclaimed director Akira Kurosawa's distinctive style and they've the even enlisted the Japanese Philharmonic Orchestra. We look forward to it arriving on these shores very soon. But 
in the meantime, we'd like to take this opportunity to say we're listening to you, man. Yes, we've been sifting through the competition answers, sorting out the bright from the shite. And this week, we've got a whole load of poo in response to our scatologically obsessed competition question from a couple of weeks back. We wanted you to squeeze out your ideas and tell us which games character spent the most time on the shit tub. And boy, are you guys full of it. Yeah, here's one from some numbnut. Uh, I think Dizzy would need the shit seat the most for vomiting as well as taking a dump. Surely spinning around all day isn't going to be good for your insides. Hmm, methinks he might be a scrambled egg. Ha 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 ha! Did you see what I did? Dizzy, an egg, scrambled. I got a million of them. I'm here all week. Try the fish. What the frick are you talking about? Moving on. Dear Bits, the game character who would spend longest on the crapper is our good pal Pac-Man. The poor fellow's diet consists 95% hard yellow nutty things, 4% big fat pills so he's constipated beyond history and tripping like a bastard. And okay, so maybe we give him like a piece of fruit 1% of the time, but like a couple of cherries aren't going to loosen anything up. Duh. Love. David Dunkley. Well done, Dumpley. You pooper scoop the prize. A compact and bijou pisswan. Now, if you'd like to enter any of our competitions or would simply like to say hello, then join us at our website at www.forlater.com forward slash bits. But right now, Lara Croft is getting on our friend Kirsten's tits. Which of these games do I have a problem with? Is it 2 meter 1, 2 meter 2, 2 meter 3, 2 meter 4? No. It's this one. It's 2 meter 5, 2 meter Chronicles. And you know why? Because it's half the length of all the other Tomb Raider games. Core, you forgot to make the other half of your game. It's meant to last you like two months. This lasts you like two weeks. That's just crap. Uh -huh. 2 meter 2? Aha! 2 meter 3? Aha! Aha! You know, it's, you have to have it there. If you take away Lara's aha, uh -huh, it's like taking away Homer Simpson. It's just. You can't do it. But after the break, we talk to the culprits behind it all, Core Design. And Emily gets jiggy with Project Eden.